It's been quite a journey for you guys throughout Season 5, and you guys chose the game number two against Arrival for the first episode of Smite Memoirs. Tell me why, Aurora, you chose this game. Um, so we chose, we chose game two because obviously it's a final. It was the world's final, and um, game one, we kind of made some big mistakes, and we, got, and we lost that game. And then going into this game, we made some other mistakes at the beginning of this game and we had to fight back from being down 1-0 in the set and then being behind like 5,000 gold in the game so I just think it's a good game to look at and like a good game to just remember. What was some of the conversations after game one that you guys tried to fix for game number two? Well the one thing that sticks in my head is funny Moswell was not I, not speaking at all in the first <laughs> game and we were everybody was like Moswell you have to talk. And I remember it was like, Moswell, it's just like any other Smite game, just open your mouth and like talk talk to each other and we'll be fine, basically. Uh, Sino isn't here, but I actually, I distinctly remember him like looking over to Moswell and screaming like, I don't even care if you just say hit or miss. I guess you never miss. I just want you to say something. <laughs> he did say that. <laughs> and I, w I was like, what happened in this game? Like, <laughs> even in the world championships, we're still gonna be memers at the end of the day till we die. Angrily memeing, yeah. yeah. All right, so off of that mindset, I wanted to talk about picks and bans in game number two. Did you guys get everything you wanted in game number two? How did it play out? Yeah, I feel like in the first game, we basically got a good draft as well. Um, and then going to this game, I feel like both teams kind of got what they wanted. And we, were, we didn't really mind what the other team got, to be honest. We just knew what we wanted. And we knew that what we were playing was kind of good against like everything in the meta that we've seen so far, unless they pulled something completely different on. They didn't really pull out like too many surprises. Like the big surprise this game was the Kakolin, but he kind of falls into the same archetypes of gods that like our gods kind of do well against, so we weren't too worried about it. Yeah, a lot of our prep for Rival, we like sat down to do it, and then we were like, we can't really guess what Rival's gonna pick, so we sat there and like talked about what we wanted for like maybe exactly. an hour and a half, two hours. Yeah, I mean, to also go off of the Aries ban because that's something that probably seemed a little bit weird. Um, we, we probably didn't absolutely have to ban it, but aside from like what happened in the first game, there was also like the threat of like Deathwalker has been known to play Aries into Terra, and we weren't sure if we like we didn't know if we wanted to play Terra or not in any given game, but we knew that if we left Aries open, it'd be counterpicked. So like we just wanted to give ourselves options in the pick ban phase. Gotcha. So it sounds like you guys got most of everything you wanted. Masel, how did you feel about the Agni pick? Uh, it was fine that game, like, it was just a spear character and we had four magical. So this, this part right here where Sino dies, you guys opened up with a strategy where you guys gave up the right side of the map to get the left side, and I think Sino heavily got punished for it, but I think you guys still came out on top. Was there anything that Sino said after this point in the game? He just said he's behind, basically, and he just needs to get XP, and like, we, like, the whole mindset of our comp was that we knew like we were really strong in the mid and late game. We just knew we had to weather the storm early game against them because they had a lot of early game characters like Kakolin for instance. So as long as we stayed in the game and like didn't let the gold lead like go like ridiculous amounts and made them get like a super early objective and stuff, we'd be fine. Okay, so the next part I wanted to talk about was this fight at the back camp specifically <clears throat> where Ice Ice Baby had a little bit of a lead and trying to get into the one versus one. I think that there wasn't too much respect on the passive of Pele here. Uh, I also wasn't there. Yeah, I think the idea, because usually when that happens, there's a lot, a lot of yelling like, Moswell, you need to hit this person, and Moswell in this situation wasn't able to hit that person. So it, it wasn't a met, like a lack of respect in the situation, it was just the damage wasn't there that we expected, and then we already committed to the fight. That was a good egg by Moswell. Yeah. <laughs> I think they'd tower dive you if that damage goes through, probably. Yeah. They pretty, his dash was down, so yeah. So off of that, like, mentally, how were you trying to recollect yourself? Just losing three people at your own back camps. We traded, we got one kill there, right? Yeah. yeah so, I mean, we, we still, I remember we were like, I mean, it's rough right now. Oh, this was so close, too. The Talaria boots? Yeah, the dodge. Oh, but, yeah. um... We knew that, like I said before, like we just knew how good our comp was, so we just had to try to stay as positive as possible and just keep trying to farm and basically fight them in the mid game when, we're, when we come online. And then, so this is where another point in the game where Rival was starting to make aggressive plays against you guys. They towered Dove Divios on the right side of the map and Sino's looking for a play on the left. How was Divios handling the pressure that Deathwalker's Kakoan was bringing? 
Well, Divius, Divius was fine with it because he's just like, I'm Geb, I'm chilling. <laughs> like, if we can get this game to go later, we're fine, basically. And, oh, yeah, here comes yeah, the famous fun. play, yeah. This is, this is like an iconic play, I feel like, in this world. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Ice Ice Baby just kind of casually tower diving tier two. <laughs> Utilizing that paint lay passive, and uh, we were talking about this before the video went live about how Sino was like missing abilities, but then we rewatched it a couple times, and it didn't look like Sino even used any of his abilities. He just abilities. didn't even expect the damage. Yeah. yeah. And he also gave Mazel a friendly pat on the back with some lightning. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty good. <laughs> Did you know he killed you there, or no? I didn't say anything. <laughs> but then, yeah. <laughs> what you? What, I never asked you what, what. What were you thinking after that play? Oh. <laughs> 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 okay, he's pretty good, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so one minute after that, I think is when the first comeback starts happening. When you guys were down about like 5,000 gold or so. Not too much, but it could be a slippery slope if you're not careful. Let me just rewind a little bit more. This is where they get gold fury, but you guys... Yeah, we trade gold for Deathwalker, and I think like this is like... As long as we, if we know we can still kill their tank, basically, because that's like our, that was our whole goal this entire event was just to kill. And it's funny because we literally did the same thing every single day that we played, and it worked every single day. And we didn't really have to make too many adjustments to like our main game plan, and like no teams really picked up on what we were doing, which was really good for us, obviously. Yeah. And as as long as we knew that we could still kill Deathwalker, we knew that we could win the game right there. And that was like a check, like can we kill him still? And we did because if he lived long enough to for his team to rotate over, and we all ended up dying, that was probably game over. But we were able to kill him, get out. And that just gives us time to get back into the game and like get more farmer on the map. Yeah, level 13 Kakolin is not your typical raid boss yet, with only about 3.3 items here. But this is another point where you guys start to come back. I think Rival got a little bit too frisky here. Tell me your guys' mentality while Cyclone Spin rotates on the side. Yeah, I think since they knew that Sino Sash, they wanted to fight us, and it was really weird because I think it was it was more of a mistake from Rivals comms because I don't think they knew Divios was there. I don't think they had good enough wards at all either. Like Divios just comes in and basically shields him, and Sino's fine even though his Sash is down. I mean, me and Moswell, we just stun lock the Pele yeah. and do like half her health. And you said like Ice Ice couldn't even get off the knockup for so long. Yeah. And this is sick double loop here. Cyclone's been known for his rotations. Because of that rotation, you guys got a three for nothing and eliminate most of that lead that Rival has been building. Yeah, that was uh, just because I couldn't hear the comms, but that was like a, a breath of fresh air for me. Because I'm sitting here like, ah, this game is looking really bad. And Especially we... after that first game, right? <laughs> well, the first game was like, it was weird because like all the issues were like very fixable, but like it just looked really, really bad when it happened. So it, it all depended on how they dealt with it and they were fine for the most part after that game. Moswell was talking this game too, which helped a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I, was owning, I was owning the first game. I was like a ring player. I was just beasting. I love when words come out of your mouth. <laughs> yeah. so. so that was a real turning point outside of all these fights was Moswell's commitment. So we were looking back at this before, and you guys were talking about the late game, how you guys had the better late game composition. Is it mostly because of the Geb? Yeah, the Geb, and then just Freya's just really strong late game, and then um, even though we're four magic, like Moswell said, we have a spear mage, and Moswell does a million damage to Agni too in the late game. So, like, what do you think, John, compared to Agni late game, who's better? Agni's way better. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. <laughs> Especially when he builds defense. Yeah, that's true. 21 minutes into the game, I wanted to touch up upon a fight around this gold fury. There was a lot of dancing around this gold fury, and then a fight finally happens right around this point when you guys are waiting for somebody to be out of position. I think that somebody was Ice Ice Baby eventually. Or you guys just blink in and go ham. Yeah, when, when we all get there, Divios just goes, but that's what we were waiting for. We were just waiting for everybody to get grouped up. And then Ice Ice tries to flank, and we Moswell just stuns him there. We pick him off really easily, it was really good. And then Divios and Cyclone play this fight really well. Yeah, I think like you guys only get the one kill, but then you immediately get Gold Fury after. You only shield too. Yeah, that shield is nuts. Divios had some really good shields. We'll look at a better shield later on when he saves Cyclone's spin. Yeah, even a better one than that. <laughs> 
crazy. But uh, I'm surprised Callus lives here, honestly, at the end of the day. But yeah, you guys eliminate this gold lead because right now they're only up 2,000 gold at 22 minutes. That's basically negligible, especially once you guys get the gold here, you're tying it up. So that was a big comeback moment. I think that was comeback moment number three. And you guys were talking about around the 23 minute mark where you guys made a really sick play where I think you guys get four, almost get a straight up D aside, but you guys make the no FG call. Talk me through this team fight. So we knew since we just got gold, we all backed. So they knew that they, they had a free time to pyro. This was weird that he caged me here. I, we, we were happy with the cages of this game, obviously. And I just kind of sat back. And then... Deathwalker jumps in as a corpse. Yeah. Moswell does a lot of damage in this fight. Same with Cyclone. And then the shield, I think. One Cyclone spin. Cyclone gets done at like four health and then Aegis is. <laughs> and then gets Geb shield. It's crazy. So you guys trade, I think, four for two. Do you guys think you could have done Fire Giants looking back? No, oh, yeah. We maybe could have, but... No, 100%. We have Nasia. We have Geb the tank, and then we have Nasia and Agni, but... But is it worth doing Fire Giant without having Cyclone Spin receiving the buff? Well, it's, t it's two things, right? It's the fact that Cyclone doesn't get the buff, and the other is that we just want to fight so hard at Fire with, like, where we were, and we just want to fight and have a bunch of gold to spend if we take their whole jungle. The other thing is, too, Moswell gets some farm, but look at the classic sign of steel. What do you think of that, Moswell, of your wave? I'm, I'm used to it. <laughs> 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 Our level 17 Agni's like starving and wants an item and then Sino's just no, that's my way. But hey, if Sino gets level 20 and he finishes off that Deathbringer, that's a pretty good power spike. It turns out that comes into play in the next fight, huh? Yeah. I think it does. I think that you guys... <laughs> Yeah, let's actually fast forward to that. Turns out Sino has the biggest brain in Smite and knows exactly what's going to happen. 2000 IQ. Talk me through this fight. I think this was the second. No, this was the last fight, actually. This is when they think they could kill Gab. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then you yeah. can't. <laughs> so you guys were mentioning the shields were questionable. No, I don't th the, the engage, I think, was weird from them. Oh, no, this is just, a, this, no, this is where we were supposed to do fire. We were, we were the one step far ahead of here. This is where I think we could have done fire. Actually, no. No, we, we were calling a group up at fire, and it looks like they just got there before us, and Divios was standing far up. To yeah, them. no, I'm confused now. Don't ignore me. <laughs> so yeah, trading two for two. Game is basically even. Yeah, so what we do, we just back and get wards here and come back to fire. We, we know we're, we, we played that fight kind of bad, I feel like, and we know we could have played it better. So we just kind of talked through like how we wanted to f play the next fight and just we came back. I saw my Phantom as well, which is- Yeah, so what, what were some of those things that you were talking about to prepare for the next fight? Um, Everyone be there. Yeah, everybody be there and just like get wards and, and then just keep hitting their tanks basically when they come Yeah, back. cause this is when we also, like I just got ob shards, so they just get one shot. Yeah, so once Moswell gets pen, we have, we have the pen from Moswell, we have pen from Cyclone. Um, all we gotta do is CC the tanks and let them kill the tanks basically and just try to survive and make it a 4v5. And I think this is where Rival really drops the ball here. Ice Ice maybe Aldo in the left side of the map. You guys are pinging this out, no hesitation. You clear the sentry ward, you're doing fire giants. What's going through your mindset right now? Um, I mean, we see him in left like you said. Um, the only one that's close because we have wards is the Odin. So Divio, we CC chain him between me and Divio. So then Sino gets a really good blink alt on Wolfie here. And the one shots him, yeah. literally one shot. No relics him. available yeah. from that last fight. And then we kind of just walk down the lane. I mean, we were actually, it was really funny. We were calling don't fight here after we got fire. Don't fight, don't fight, don't fight. He's like, I got Wolfie in the air. And then we were just like, fight, fight, fight. It was just like, <laughs> it was like, don't fight, don't fight, 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 fight. It was just like a huge change. Like all of a sudden it was funny. And then we just end up winning the game off. And that's just, what happens sometimes like you kind of just have to go with the flow and like kind of adjust to like the situation like if you see a play definitely make it even if your team is calling you back but you've got to be really confident in that play if you're going against what the main call is and he was and he got a really good pick on Wolfie and it basically sealed the game for us. And can you guys hear the crowd cheering you on as you were making that play? Yeah. After every I single kill. kill. After every kill. Yeah. How, how did it feel Moswell? Because you've never played entire before. family. Yeah. <laughs> Gotcha. Moswell, what did you think after winning game number two? Well, we, we knew we could win if like we were even or ahead. So, because we were just like better at team fighting than everyone we felt like. So what was like your plan for game number three? Because you guys were pretty like, it didn't seem like you guys were too ecstatic after winning this game from the reactions. What was some of the communications like? Uh, 
Ba basically for me, it was just getting me on one of my gods because I only had to play two gods literally the entire season. And then like they go into this thinking I can only play two and then I just <laughs> end true. up, Yeah. they end up getting really surprised. That was yeah. a big part of our draft strategy. That was huge too, because like Rival thought that Moswell was only gonna play Outplash or Zeus and then he whips out the Agni and has like a phenomenal game. And then later on in the set, he plays Ryzen. So yeah, so. I mean, the other thing is too that we knew they were probably not going to get Freya going to that game, and we just knew we were going to get like our picks that we wanted, other than Freya, basically. So we were, we were feeling pretty good. That's awesome, especially coming back from that first game deficit. Because if you guys like lost that game specifically, that would have been one of the hardest comebacks ever to win three in a row. Because didn't did it go like one 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 like that? No, it went. One, two, one, one. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. And we could have won the fourth game. Yeah. I know how hard it is to come back from being down 0-2 because I was in the semifinals against um, Obey in season three Worlds. And we, we got down 0-2 and we came back to make it 2-2 in the third game, which was so hard. So I knew that game was so important. Moss, well, Aurora, Kabam, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for, Thanks having, for us. having us.